In this GY6 video, I'm going to show you in a step-by-step -step process how to replace the starter gear, which is this right here, rotates in one direction only and locks. A symptom when this is going bad is when the scooter is idling or at a low RPM, you can hear a loud rattling coming from the inside of the engine. Usually that is because this gear right here has become faulty or because of your rollers in your variator. Now I replaced my rollers and I still have a rattling sound so that's why I'm going to be swapping this out and while I'm inside this area working because the scooter is over four years old I'm going to be installing a new oil pump as well and that's what you see right here. Now to get started place your scooter on the center kickstand and you're going to remove the eight millimeter screws around the cover. Put that away. There's one here. Another one located between the pipe and the plastic. All right, that one's good. Go back to the nut driver. And that should come off. Here's a nut right here. Remove that. These are also Phillips. I blocked the camera just a little bit, but nothing I can do. All right. Now this cover will come straight out. Make sure this goes back in on here. Like that. This ground wire just push out of the way. Next, their fan is removed using the same 8 millimeter. Make sure the engine switch is off. Make sure your key is out of the ignition. And if you want to be extra safe, you could disconnect the negative from your battery. As you can see, it's very easy to replace a cooling fan if you had to. And now we expose the flywheel. Now this part you see around the center here is very thick steel. This is about an eighth of an inch thick, this band. All right. So what you can do, if you don't have some sort of a spanner to hold this, how I normally do it is I take a pipe wrench, reach around like this, and as you can see, that holds it perfectly, and you're not going to bend or damage anything. Then you can go in with your socket, and then you could go to loosen it, and this will no longer turn. You could put a cheater bar on the end of the ratchet handle for more leverage. So I'm going to remove this nut, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, as you can see, the nut has been removed. I could take this out of here now. Now, in order to pull the flywheel off, there is a special tool that's made for this, and it looks like what you see right here in this image. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, like me, then you can make your own to remove the flywheel. If you have a piece of quarter-inch steel laying around, like this, then what you could do is you could drill a large hole in the center, 
the purpose of that hole in the middle is to allow the two-jaw puller to go through to push on the shaft to remove the flywheel. The other four holes you're looking at, I drilled exactly to line up with the fan blade holes. This steel is very thick. It looks like it's over an eighth of an inch thick. It looks like about that thick right there from what I could see. So you could put four bolts into these holes. Then you could take this plate with those four holes, put your bolts through the holes, and secure this plate down tightly into the holes where the fan blade was attached using around one or one and a quarter inch long eight millimeter bolts. It'll go straight through. This is very thick. You're not going to be bending it. I've taken this off a bunch of times. I've had no problems. I'll show you how this looks with the plate put on before I use the puller. As you can see, the plate is now secured. I added a couple of 5 16 nuts to make the bolt not go in as far into the flywheel. That's the only purpose of those. Tighten this down good. And now I have a good area to use to pull as I'm pushing on the shaft. All right, this is what it looks like with the puller. Now I could tighten this down and pull off the entire flywheel. Let me get it started here. And bingo, popped it right off. It worked perfect like it does every other time. See how clean? And put this off to the side. Now the next step, I'm going to remove the two bolts holding the stator. Kind of tight, so let me go over to... The ratchet. I'm going to remove the stator. Loosen that up. The windings look nice. They're not burned. Nice bright copper. Remove this. Now when I put these bolts back in, I'll usually use some Loctite blue medium strength locker on these and when I put this nut back on the flywheel I'll usually use the red and you'll be fine with that. Take notice where the one different coil is. This one has tape wrapped around it and it points forward so when this goes back in make sure the one that's different points forward. And that comes off nice. Remove the strap which holds the wire for the stator in place. There's two bolts for that. Now switch back over to the nut driver. That's a long one. So put these in a place where you will remember where they go. So I'm going to line these up on the ground. That bolt goes to the left. 
And now I got the one on top. And take notice that this curve goes over the wire like that. Now I'm going to take the two bolts off on the pickup. One. Two. Lift up the pickup coil. Remove the pickup coil. That has two shorter bolts. Put these down here. I changed this once before. Actually twice. One I made and a year later I got my hands on a brand new one and I put it back. Lift all this up carefully and push it out of the way. This strap I'll push down here. Grab this, pull forward, and tuck that up here out of the way also. Now we have a nice clean area here. Everything is gone. So if you wanted to replace your stator, up to this step is exactly how you would have replaced your stator, and then you would just reverse it. Now the spacing between the pickup and the flywheel itself so between the pickup coil that was mounted here and the magnet over here on the flywheel, you usually use around 12 thousandths of an inch, 0.012. Now before we continue, the next step is we are going to drain the oil from this area right here. So get a metal pan, remove your drain bolt, and let all the oil drain out. After that's done, I will come back. All right, I'm draining the oil out. I don't know if you can see it right here running out. It's draining out right now. Only holds around three quarters of a quart. Once this is completely drained, then we can continue taking out the bolts. I already took out these two, and these two here were holding the strap for the stator. That's been removed. I have to remove one here, as well as one at the bottom. I'm going to start here on the top, take that one out. When this cover is removed, it's going to expose the starter gear as well as the oil pump with the chain. After you move the exhaust system, you're going to remove the bolts going into the plate attached to the rear wheel. And then you're also going to remove the shock. The bolt here has been removed. That allows this plate to move around freely. Now this plate was normally up here not allowing you to pull this off so this now drops to an area where this cover can be slid forward like that. Once this pipe is removed the entire piece will slide off and we can access the oil pump as well as the starter gear. Alright the cover is now slid off. I was able to leave the pipe on just loosened it up Right here is the oil pump behind this cover with the oil pump chain and this is the starter clutch which we're going to replace. We're going to swap this out as well as the oil pump. Right up here in the left is where your starter engages this gear. This gear right here and this gear turns the starter clutch. In order to remove the starter clutch we have to remove this little collar which holds the starter clutch in place. Now to remove the starter clutch 
is to use a chisel like that, put it into the notch in the collar, and then bang hard to get this to rotate clockwise. Once the ring is loose, you can then spin it clockwise and then remove it. If you take a chisel or a screwdriver and you try tapping the, the ring clockwise to release it, and if it does not release, you could always place a pipe wrench over it. You can always place a pipe wrench over it and tap on the handle of the pipe wrench to release that ring also. All right, this is what it looks like after the starter clutch is slid off of the spindle here. And there's another key back here, which engages into the starter clutch. Now the next thing I'm going to do is remove this cover here with that bolt and that bolt to access the oil pump. Now to remove the oil pump, you need to remove the chain. So grab this bolt, pull forward, and then you could lift this out. And then you can lift the chain over the top and take that out. Now you see at the bottom there's two bolts. Take that one out and that one out. Then you're going to remove the oil pump. Take notice of the orientation of the pump. Okay, you are looking into the opening where the oil pump was removed from. Once you remove the pump, take a rag and clean that area nice. This is the old pump. And this is the gear, the sprocket attached to the shaft, which I'm going to unbolt and connect onto the new pump before I reinstall it. When you install the new oil pump, make sure the dot in the pump and the arrow is pointing up. The next step is to now reinstall the starter clutch. Make sure the keyway on the starter clutch lines up perfectly with the key on the crankshaft. There you go, that's in. The next step after the starter clutch is installed, reinstall the washer and then you're going to be reinstalling this nut. To tighten you go counterclockwise. Alright, the lock ring is on the starter clutch and I installed the gear into the starter. Everything is ready to go. I'm going to clean up the gasket areas and apply some red RTV, a thin film and bolt everything back together. Alright, this cover is back on. All the bolts tighten securely. The oil drain plug is back in. The oil is back inside the crankcase. Now I'm going to put back the shock. Bolt that back. I'm going to push this plate back into position and bolt that. And retighten the exhaust system and put all that back together. When you put the stator back in and the pickup coil, make sure the stator is pointing in the right direction. Make sure the pickup coil has about 12 thousandths of an inch between the pickup coil and the magnet on the flywheel. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.